Good morning. I know, I know it's a little early, and I'm cutting off your greeting time just a tad. But we'll have greeting time after church too. So let's go ahead and get started. I have the bulletins announcements, and I have a handful of other ones that I need to make. First of all, talk louder. Oh, help me out. Uh, is that okay now? Better. If you missed breakfast this morning, my goodness, you missed a spread. And I have at least these people to thank. Faye Robinson, Donna Pridmore, Lucy Threlkill, Lorraine Stewart, Susie Lindholm, Sally Berryhill, Doris Kirkwood, Susie Travis, Gibby Mosley, and Sylvia and Joel Hogan. If you know any of those people, please thank them for bringing food this morning or serving or cleaning up. It was a fantastic welcome. We were able to meet Ron Gonya. If you haven't met him, you need to. He's sitting right up here. Take it easy on him a little bit. He's still fresh out of the hospital, but we pray that he's recovering and he'll be at full strength for too much longer. Okay. United Methodist Women Unit Meeting, scheduled for Tuesday, has been canceled so that you can attend the funeral, uh, which we lost three members of our extended family over the week. And that was uh, Chip Berryhill's bro Chip. <laughs> you know, when the, when the mind goes, uh, it's really bad. Chip Burton's uh, brother passed away. Last week, I believe. Keep that family in your prayers. If I can find my announcement here. Here we go. Family of Leonard Blackwell. Uh, uh, keep them in your prayers as Leonard passed away at the ripe age of 102. If we could all live that long and think of the experiences that we could have. His service will be tomorrow, 2 p.m. at Forest Grove Cemetery. And then Betty McDonald's sister passed away. And her visitation is also tomorrow at, I'm sorry? Monday is wrong. Are both of those on Tuesday or just one? Just one. Which one's t Tuesday? Okay. Thank you so much, Betty. That visitation is actually Tuesday from 1030 to noon, and the service will be at noon. Uh, keep Mary and Meredith Byram in your prayer. Her last name is Berkey, I think, her new last name. You know, they do their annual service at the Royal Family Kids Camp where they provide medical service and guidance, and I'm sure they spread a little love and uh, witness as well. Keep them in your prayers. Uh, if you're not a Facebook friend of Lucy or Jean, their oldest daughter, Katie, had some tree damage last week. Uh, it actually rained in the Atlanta area as well as over here in Alabama. And pray for them as they get all that put back together the way they had it. We have a finance committee meeting next Sunday along with the church ministry council at 2 o'clock. So keep that in your prayers and on your calendar as well. Are there any other announcements that I failed to mention at this time that need to be made? Oh, I know I missed one. And we're still taking newspapers as well, so newspapers and hangers. Dorothy, you asked me to say something, and I've forgotten. 
What did I forget your announcement? Thank you. Yes, I thank you for giving me a piece of paper. Anybody else? Y'all, I'm telling you, it go, when it goes, it goes. I, I pray to the Lord every day to leave a little behind. Uh, we are having words, I mean, right out of my mouth they were coming, but thank you for that reminder. We have started up chancel choir practice on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. We are working our way with Bo to come together for a, the new sound that we're going to have. So if you want to be a part of that, please come at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. Now, tryouts will be at five minutes before. <laughs> yes, I'm joking. <clears throat> Any other announcements that we need to make at this time? Don't ever move the program. At this time, then, I will ask the praise team or the spirit team, whichever they prefer, to come up and we'll open our worship service. remember to bring your music? <laughs> Thankfully, I don't have to do that. <laughs> well, good morning, Pleasant Grove. Good breakfast this morning, good fellowship. Let's continue it now as we stand together as we're able and sing our first song this morning. It's called Days of Elijah. <clears throat> Is that a signal? There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your 
voice It's the year of Jubilee And out in Zion's hill Salvation comes Behold He comes Riding on the clouds Shining like the sun At the trumpet call Lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee And out in Zion's hill Salvation comes Lift your voice here I do believe, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. <laughs> this next song is not one that you typically can sing along with, so we didn't put the words up for you. If you know the chorus, you can sing it with us, though. Uh, it's one that we like to do. We hadn't done it in a while. We thought it might just be fun to do today. This is going to be our last Sunday to sing for a little while. We're going to take a little break. So we thought it would be a good time to, to do this one. And uh, we have three great characters in this. We have God. Pretty great. just talking about us. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty great. We have people acting out three great characters. I forgot who they are now. That's just okay. <laughs> They'll figure it out. We, we have the Lord and Noah, and then we have a narrator. So hopefully you'll enjoy it and you'll get the story about Noah. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That is the reason the scriptures record. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Well, the Lord looked down from his window in the sky and said, I created man, but I don't remember why. Nothing but fighting since creation day. I'll send a little water and I'll wash them all away. So the Lord came down to look around the spell and there he found Noah behaving mighty well. And that is the reason the scriptures record that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That is the reason the scriptures record. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord said, Noah, there's going to be a flood, and there's going to be some water, and there's going to be some mud. Take off your hat, Noah, and take off your coat, get ham, shem, and jpeth, and build yourself a boat. Noah said, Lord, I don't believe I could. The Lord said, Noah, get some sturdy gopher wood. You never know what you can do till you try. Build it 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That is the reason the scriptures record. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah said, There it is, there it is, Lord. The Lord said, Noah, it's time to get aboard. Now take a creature, a he and a she, and of course Mrs. Noah and the whole family. Noah said, Lord, it's getting mighty dark. The Lord said, Noah, get these creatures in the ark. Noah said, Lord, it's beginning to pour. The Lord said, Noah, hurry up and shut the door. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Well, the ark rose up from the foot of the deep, and after 40 days, Mr. Noah took a peek and said, We ain't moving, Lord. Where are we at? The Lord said, You're sitting on Mount Ararat. Noah said, Lord, it's getting mighty dry. The Lord said, Noah, this is our rainbow in the sky. Take all the creatures and people to earth, and don't be more trouble than you're worth. Surely the presence of the Lord 
can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. In the midst of his children, the Lord said he would be. It doesn't take very many. It can be just two or three. And I feel that same spirit that I felt times before. Surely I can say I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power. of angels' wings, I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. There's a holy hush around us as God's glory fills His place. I touch the hem of His garment. I can almost see his face, and my heart is overflowing with the fullness of this love. I know without a doubt that I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Father, we come to worship you, to exalt you. Lord, we know you have power over everything. Lord, we call on you to use your love and your grace for those who need healing, for those who need rehabilitation, for those who are suffering some other consequence, Lord, whether it be financial or relationships. Lord, we just ask that you would stand in the path that you would undergird them, that you would nurture them. They would feel your presence. They would know your love. And they would have the faith to continue on trusting in you. Lord, we know there's nothing too big for you to handle. Lord, we thank you for this church, these people that make up this church, Lord. Their hearts and their hands are so useful to you. And we thank you for their willingness to give and their love and their grace and all that they do. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen us that as each of us has gifts and talents, that we would use them for you and not hold back. Lord, that we would be willing to step out. Sometimes, Lord, it's not comfortable. But, Lord, we ask that you would guide us, undergird us, and strengthen us, that we would be that witness that would testify for you when the opportunity presents itself. Lord, we know that we can't depend on people just to walk into our church, that we have to witness to them, Lord. So we come here to nurture our faith, to strengthen our belief. And, Lord, for that reason, we pray for Rachel today that you would just bless her heart 
and that the message that she has would come into our hearts, and that our minds would be open to hear your word, and that everything that we hear would uh, pertain to us in the way that you'd have us hear it. So, Lord, go with us in this service now, Lord. Be with those who have special needs. Be with those who are strange. Be with those who are in the military serving to keep our freedom that we can come and serve thee and worship thee. We just ask all your blessings today, Lord, for in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Time for the children to come now for Children's Minute. Good morning. Mr. Gene didn't feel so well, and he went home, and he asked me to come up and have the children's time with you all. And you know what? I see a few new faces this week from last week. There's one special person that's up here. Do you know who he is? <laughs> that's my husband, Ron. You can just call him Mr. Ron. You can call him Pastor Ron if you want to, because you know what? He's not the pastor here, but he is a pastor. He's the preacher's wife here, that's what he says. <laughs> so can you all tell him your names? Let's Jonah. Jo Jonah. She's wearing a robe. We didn't, yeah, okay. What's your name? Chase. Sienna. All right, that's Ron. Well, today, during church, we're going to read a scripture where Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. What's a yoke? It comes out of an egg, yeah. That's, that's what most of us think, but it's an old-fashioned word, and it's, it actually looks a lot like, it just dawned on me, turn around and look at that letter on the altar. You see that thing that looks like, this goes like this like this see how this that shape that right that's what a yoke is okay and it goes on an animal and it helps the the farmer make the animal go straight down a row and they usually put an, two animals together and they go together so that's what a yoke is Jesus is talking to the people and telling them I'll tell you later. 
Um, but the yoke is there to help control the, the animals. And what God is asking us to do is to obey, to be people who listen to what God wants. Do you always listen to your mom and dad? Do you always do what they say? No. <laughs> not always. But that's what God wants us to do is to listen, not just to our parents, but to what God wants us to do and to follow. And that's all that means. It doesn't mean we're supposed to walk around with a big heavy wooden thing on us. It means that God wants us to be people who listen and obey. Okay, I'm going to say a prayer. Is that okay? Do y'all usually repeat after the preacher? No, okay, well, I'm just going to say a prayer then. God, thank you that you love us and care for us. Help us to know that love in our hearts and to live every day as your obedient children. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come to a time of prayer together, I hope that you will hold in your heart the concerns that have been lifted up as well as those that you have in your own life that go unnamed. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, we come to you from many places. Some hearts overflow with joy and gratitude. Others are barely hanging on to hope and faith. For some, this is an ordinary morning for others, every step seems fragile. Holy One, meet us where we are and bind us to each other that in this community of your love we might discover our wholeness. We name before you now the concerns that each of us hold in our hearts. God of life, we ask your blessing on our work and our rest in the jobs that feed our souls and in jobs that do not satisfy, in volunteer service and routine daily tasks, in long hours of caregiving, and in hours that we do not know how to fill, come to us and show us how we might serve you. Lord, we do lift before you those needs which we know, we pray especially for those who are ill in body and mind and spirit who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for those who are struggling with, with concerns of jobs, finances, houses, all those daily tasks that overwhelm us at times. And Lord, we lift before you all those who grieve. For those who have lost one, they hold dear. 
Might they be comforted by your presence. Might they know your spirit strengthening them. Might they know your love and grace giving them strength for each day. We ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we might know your power and resurrection hope. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear this reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. 
For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And these words from the Gospel according to Matthew. And this is Jesus speaking. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say look a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. I do it. Those were the first words a friend of mine's little girl spoke. I do it. How many of you remember that time when your child was two and fighting for their independence? How many times did you hear, let me do it? I'm sure that many of us remember those days. Some of us are right there in the middle of it. <laughs> and many of us remember our teenage years when we yearn for that sense of independence. I can remember getting the car keys and being able to drive that car on my own all by myself for the first time. We want that freedom. In Paul's letter to the Romans, it's like he's discussing the grown-up issue of saying, I do it. Let me handle it. Let me do it. He laments that he knows what he should do, but he cannot do it. The Old Testament law has taught him right from wrong and what he should do. And he knows what's right. And yet he still makes poor choices and does the thing he knows he should not do. Does it sound familiar? Is it not something that we all experience in some way or another? Paul's describing what is common to us because none of us are perfect. Preachers included, none of us are perfect. We all fall short. Paul expresses that sediment in verse 24 when he says, Wretched man that I am. But then he shares the good news in the next sentence. Who will save me? Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. It is through Christ that we are all rescued. In the gospel reading today, we hear Jesus talking about something similar. Jesus says that we cannot know God through our brains. For God has hidden the things of God from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to infants, to those who are like children. It's not by our reason, our logic, our judgment, our intellect that we can know Jesus. We know God in our hearts. Who are the wise and intelligent people that Jesus is speaking of in this passage? He's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious people of his day. They sought to know God by keeping the law, just as Paul was describing. These religious people could not see God in Christ standing right before them. 
surely we are not as blind as they were. Are we so busy keeping the commandments that we don't see God at work in other ways right in front of us? Are we too busy living out the commandments that we wear ourselves out, that we're worn down to the point that we can't open our hearts to where God might be moving in new ways? In this passage, Jesus offers what's called the great invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Who are the weary? I would imagine that some of us sitting right here are pretty weary. The weary are those who are worn down and overburdened. From the text, we might think that Jesus is just thinking of those who are tired. But if you look at the entire passage of Scripture, he's referring to those who have been worn down by trying to follow the law, by trying to fill every letter, dot every I, cross every T of the letter of the law. They have tried to live it because the Pharisees have pushed them to observe it in that way. They are weary and tired of the burden of fulfilling the Jewish law. The Greek word for weary that's used here generally means to be engaged in hard work, implying difficulties and trouble. And as a result of that hard work, one might be tired or weary. But it can also have a non-physical or a figurative meaning. It can mean feeling emotionally fatigued and discouraged. That is, being about to give up, to lose heart or hope. The rest that Jesus offers is this, a rest for those who have tried to fulfill the law and have worn themselves out doing it. Those who are about to give up because they have lost heart. That might also be what Paul is expressing, the frustration of trying to do that good thing and just not seeming to be able to do it. Is that us? Have we burned ourselves out trying to do good? I don't know. I think sometimes it's more about trying to earn God's love. The people of Jesus' time had a clear sense that they had to fulfill God's law in order to earn God's love and grace and mercy. We know that's different. We know there's nothing we can do to put ourselves in right relationship with God. God has already done that for us through Jesus Christ. And yet, do we still not try to earn God's love? When I talk about my own faith journey, I was raised in the church. I can't remember a time when I didn't go to church most every single Sunday. Our family was there, Methodist, from birth. But when I was in junior high, I went on every youth retreat. I listened to every altar call. I say I tried to get saved time and time and time again because I watched all my friends go to the altar in tears. They were upset. And, and felt God's grace in such an emotional way. And that's not what I experienced. God's grace didn't work in my life in that same way. But I kept trying. I tried hard to get saved. For the Jewish people of Jesus' time, the law was a burden to them. And Jesus is saying, come to me and I will give you rest. What kind of rest does Jesus mean, though? Because the image that he goes on to use doesn't seem very restful to me. If I want to rest, I'm going to sit down, put my feet up, read a book, take a nap. If I want rest, I'm not going to go plow a field. Because that's what he's describing. (laughs) But the rest he means is about peace. This peace that's a deep calming of a person's mind. Another translation of this verse says, I will refresh you. That verb here almost literally means stop again. Something more like press the pause button. None of us, none of us is the energizer bunny. We cannot keep going and going and going. 
We all need that full stop once in a while. And the worn out, worn down, and overburdened need it most. The rest Jesus is offering is from the burden of the law. But the image he gives us is something really different. Especially different probably for us. Some of you may have seen a yoke in action. I haven't. Have, have any of you actually seen yoked animals plowing a field? A few folk. You have? Okay. <laughs> you learn something new every day, even after 28 years. <laughs> well, I think the only place I've really seen a yoke is on the wall at Cracker Barrel, but... <laughs> But for those of you that are like me and might not really understand it, it, it usually is made of wood. And in Jesus' day, the custom was made, it was made custom fit to animals. They made it so that it would fit them perfectly. And so when Jesus is saying the yoke is easy, an easy yoke is one that fits the animal well. It's not that it's not difficult, it's that it fits them so that it doesn't rub. It's easy in that way. There's a legend that because Jesus was a carpenter by trade that he probably made a few yokes and that there was a sign over his door that said my yoke my yokes fit well. One of the things though about the particular yoke that Jesus is speaking about is that it's a shared yoke that there are two animals in that yoke. It's a paired yoke. Often one animal was bigger and stronger and carried more of the load. The older, stronger animal would help to train the younger one. And the younger, long, young, the younger one would go along. And as long as they went where the older one was going, it was easy and light. It's when they pull, when they try to move out of that track, that it becomes difficult and hard. So part of the lesson of the yoke is about submitting. It's about submitting to Christ's yoke. I don't know if you noticed when I was talking to the kids, I pulled up my stole so they could see the shape. It's like a yoke. It's called the yoke of obedience. It's something that we all take on. That we all take on as Christians. This submission to the reign of God. When we accept Jesus as Lord of our life, we submit our lives, all of who we are, to Christ's care and love and grace. We're called to take on that yoke so that we can walk with Christ, and Christ can carry the burden with us. When we accept that yoke, it's not about our life suddenly being easy. It's not about the burdens going away. It's not like suddenly life is only good. But it's about that we fit with Christ, that we're able to walk yoked to Christ and allow Christ to carry part of our burden with us and to guide us. And our life begins to fit us better. Christ helps us discover the life to which we are suited. Christ helps us understand the gifts that we are given and how they can be used for God's glory and grace and mission in this world. And our burden might feel lighter in many ways. There's, a, I think, a song that says, My burden has become my song. Sometimes it's the very thing that burdens us that can give us more grace and teach us how to love God more. When we're doing what we know Christ wants us to do, then the pieces of our life fit better. Even though it can seem burdensome, our burdens are lightened in some way. When we try to figure it out on our own, when we say, I do it, I can do it, let me do it. When we try to save ourselves, it can be like we're climbing a sandy slope. I don't know how many of y'all have been on a sand dune, but as you walk, you feel like you're really getting someplace. 
But as that sand just slips out from under you, there's a whole lot of movement here and no movement forward. It's a lot of movement and effort without any progress. But when we are yoked to Christ, the weight of the burden is lifted because Christ carries it with us. The burdens don't disappear, but the weight is shared. Sometimes our burdens do feel like they are more than we can bear. I had somebody come up and say something to me at the breakfast this morning about how they thought I was a superwoman or something. They'd watched what happened in um, Facebook. I, I post a lot to Facebook only because there are a whole lot of people that want to know how Ron is. <laughs> and I kept people up to date on what was going on in the last two months of our life. And um, I don't take any credit for that. That was all about God and the support that I've gotten from church family, from our biological family, and from our friends, and from God carrying us through these last two months. It is because we are yoked to Christ that the burden is lightened. It is Christ who carries the heaviest load. And when we try to carry it all, we grow very weary. What God asks of us is that we offer ourselves, that we submit ourselves to that yoke, so that God can use us for more than we could ever imagine we could do on our own, because we couldn't. We need Christ to do it. It's only when we submit ourselves to Christ that we can find true freedom. And it's in Christ's service that we find perfect freedom. And that is the paradox, that by binding ourselves to Christ, that we can be set free. So this morning I invite you, come and bind your hearts to Christ that you might be set free from what burdens you, that you might be set free to love and serve God in new and amazing ways. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward to receive this morning's offering. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you have given us, for the ways in which you have blessed our lives, for the ways in which you walk with us through everything we experience. And now we offer back ourselves, our gifts, our tithes for your service in this world, that others might come to know your love and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please remain standing for our last hymn. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. May you go forth yoked to Christ. May you go forth to love and to serve and know Christ lifting your burden. Know the peace of God with you and the Holy Spirit leading you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.